Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this quick vlog, I'd like to explore the potential impact of groups of voters that skew accepted voting wisdom based on previous elections. But first, if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, we've seen the MRP poll results that suggest a conservative majority and a quite a healthy one. But also, if you dig deeper, you'll see that the trend is actually getting worse for Boris Johnson, better for Labour, and that there are a crap load of seats where, although it's currently projected to be a Tory win, it's actually quite tight. And there are 56 marginal seats in particular where the numbers of first-time voters exceed the MP's majority at the last election. About 30 of those seats are Conservative, 20 Labour, 4 Lib Dem and 2 Plaid Cymru. And for Johnson to get his majority, he'll be hoping to retain the bulk of those seats and nick the others. From the point of view of everyone opposed to him, they will be op hoping the opposite is true. Uh, and without even taking other things to account, it could simply be that that makes the difference. If those first, this isn't even about tactical voting. This is just those first time voters, the bulk of whom represent demographics who do not vote Tory. If they go out in force, if they actually turn up to vote instead of just having registered because they could do it on their phones, but actually meant it and, and you know, they, they think that they now need to use their democratic power, then that is actually all that's needed to stop Johnson's Brexit. Defeat him in those 30 seats, retain his challenges in the other 26, or the vast majority of them, and he'll still be Prime Minister, you won't stop that, but no better off than he was at the end of the last Parliament, back to being utterly impotent and incapable of getting his withdrawal bill through without amendments. In fact, he'll have just bolstered his opposition, if anything, because they've all promised to push for another referendum and campaign for Remain under such circumstances. And it's the sort of voters, these first-time voters, that can make it's so hard to poll. As I've noted on a few occasions, polling companies, including YouGov, who, who produce this MRP, produce accurate results by correctly weighting their samples. They know it's no good simply taking a representative cross-section of the population because that doesn't actually match the representative cross-section of the people who actually vote. This is one of the reasons why the Conservatives do so well. They, they deliberately make an effort to appeal to the portion of the electorate who do turn up in large numbers, the elderly, and completely ignore the part that don't, the young. Whereas other parties try to appeal to everyone because they actually want to do some good. And that, that is why no Conservative candidates are attending the college where I work to talk to students, even though candidates of all the other major parties are. They know there's no value in talking to students because they will ask tough questions and won't vote for them anyway. But quite a lot of first-time voters, both those who are not old enough last time as well as people who have only just now decided that this election is so important, they've registered for this election. There was a well above average increase in registrations, in fact. But how to take account of them? Were they all fired up by the importance of this election and about to make history by defying the polls to vote Boris Johnson into his previous state of impotence? Or were they simply barracked into registering by those such as myself who wanted them to use their vote, but ultimately those people will decide that they can't be bothered on the day itself? Both are plausible, uh, which is what makes factoring it in so difficult. The future of our country could literally come down to this. If those people who registered all go out to vote, then Boris Johnson can't realistically win. He'll still be Prime Minister, but a Prime Minister with no power to do anything other than rant and rave. Or, if those people remain infected with the sort of apathy that pervades our society under normal circumstances, then Boris Johnson will win his majority. He relies on voter apathy. And then we'll see what the monster can really do with power in his misplaced grip. So are the people fired up for this election to save their country or aren't they? And make no mistake, it will take self-motivation. No political party has really been positive in its campaigning. All of them are attacking one or more of their rivals. This is possibly the most divisive election campaign that I can remember. And although all parties are, to some extent, trying to paint a picture of a more hopeful future for some, they are doing so by discussing the broken bodies of those they will drive these changes over. This is reflected in polls which suggest that voters in general are not at all motivated in significant numbers by any party. So the hope is that they are sufficiently horrified by one, and we all know which one, that they vote for the uninspiring choice that is best placed to remove them. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, then also please click the Patreon link for details. Until next time.
and I'll see you later.